In Handel's opera, Cleopatra isn't the woman that we probably all know best from Antony and Cleopatra, the Shakespeare play, where she's this mature middle-aged woman who finds this late love with this great leader and they lead each other to mutual destruction by getting completely distracted by their adoration for each other. Because everyone, I think, has a general image in their mind of what Cleopatra should be, either from Elizabeth Taylor or from Shakespeare or general historical knowledge. It's quite, as a performer, it's quite intimidating to play someone like that. Um, especially someone who needs to be so strong and so sexy. Um, it's much easier to create a character that the audience don't have any preconceived ideas about. It's the story of a, of a young woman, let's say, some in her 20s, shall we say, uh, who has a brother and husband in one and the same person, Ptolemy or Ptolemeo, as he's called in this opera, who is a sort of deeply disturbed young man with completely uncontainable violent tendencies and he begins the opera by murdering the most important man in Rome, Pompeo, who's in civil war with Caesar. She is a woman in a man's world, um, like very much like Elizabeth I. Um, she, had she been born a man, she would have been sole, sole reigning for the whole time, no problem. But because she was a woman, she couldn't rule on her own. She needed to be married to a man, so she was married to her brother. Then she had to align herself with Julius Caesar when he came along. And then eventually she aligned herself with Antony, as we know. Um, so that really interested me in how, as a woman, you or she or I, or any of us need to show our strength, be clever, a little bit devious in her case, I think. Um, and just how she learned to play the game with such um, skill and vivacity. So we try to play love at first sight, which indeed it is, and it turns out that although she thinks she is manipulating him to love her because she needs his help, that she herself falls in love with him despite her better judgment. Um, so that during the course of the evening we see these two people motivated primarily by politics, ambition and, and self-protection and self-preservation get completely and increasingly wrapped up in these completely unexpected feelings of, of, of more than just desire but of love for each other. Um, so that, and that has become our, our, our task in rehearsals is to really pin down the moments when each of them realises they're in this much deeper than they ever wanted or planned to be. It was really interesting when Tim and I first started working on this because I came very much with the idea of a woman in a man's world, the strength, the kind of how she could fight for her rights and be strong. And Tim very much was coming from the opposite direction. He was coming very much from, he wanted her to be vulnerable and very feminine, um, not weak, but, but allow her, he really wanted to see her vulnerability and likability. So the rehearsal process has been very much the two of us sort of coming together and finding ways that we can both show I guess all sides of her, which has been um, very rewarding. <laughs>